the most important thing. What's that? <laughs> he makes you feel superior, which is the most exactly, important. Right. Yeah. and it's in good condition. Wait, we, we have so you said you want to get some questions. We're going to do that. We're going to get some chat first because yes. some, some of this is pretty fun. Well, I've got some super chats in here as well. So I, I'm going to go through that. Uh, Me too. Christopher Sheen says uh, <laughs> more hype for for this than the last five Marvel movies. That is that that is wow. not a shock. I'm not I'm not worried about this. And of course, we we know uh, Mercury. Yeah, I did most of those already. We already did that one. Yeah, uh, we already did that one. Uh, Coco Shuko says, uh, that no, we already did that. We already did that one. Did that one. <laughs> we did that one. Uh, Malachi, we did that one already. Squirrel Hermit, we did his, but there's 20 yeah. bucks. We can do it again. Thank 20 you. 20 bucks. We, we do it again. Hey, oh, <laughs> can't wait for oh, this. Yeah. One of the first RPG movies. Love it. That, that is a common theme in our chat today. Yes. TMNT and Robotech, they're number one and number two, and they flop. Yep. Oh, here's one. <laughs> <laughs> got my northern two source northern gun source book uh last weekend love the robo gladiator occ <laughs> love the robo gladiator i do not have that source book and i don't know what the robo gladiator oh, it's is sharp. but it's good. what i do know is that a triceraton versus a centrati would be a freaking awesome fight you know i mean everyone says oh oh a human fighting a kangaroo the kangaroo is always going to win well yeah but it looks cool. It's fun to watch. Even the human will get decimated <laughs> after a couple punches, right? right? So I, I imagine the the Zentradi is gonna gonna die hard in a hole. But you know who knows? You know who knows? It who depends knows? on it. Yeah, <laughs> is he micronized? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Uh, oh, here here's one that uh, that actually uh, is is close to my heart be, because I spoke about something like this just last night on my stream. This was Kevin Sean question. Is April O'Neil a redheaded white woman or Lizzo? Now, the wow. reason the, the reason I put this up there is is because uh there there's been a whole lot in uh in in refreshing IP of gender and race swapping. For wow. for what reason? Cuz they can. That's Yeah, it. I mean, without getting into any of that. Yeah, yeah, no no, uh, hang on, hang on. Um, we we we're, we're not going to we're not going to delve deeply into this. This is just so I can I can tell a joke and laugh, okay? That's all it is. Yeah, but uh, last night I said, "Hey, you know what? I have never watched one of these one of these refreshes that are change for change sake. I've never watched one. But once Disney refreshes Tarzan, and instead of a white guy falling in the jungle raised by apes, make it a black American, I dare you to do that. I dare you. I'll watch it. I'll pay for it, and and I'll watch all the other ones too because you're brave." and stupid but i'll do it but they'll, they'll never do that okay you know, so uh, screw it all you right so a question or like i said you that was out your uh, your, your soapbox there that, that was just my soapbox but we got oh, one here okay. kevin eastman was a very nice man this is from omenow uh i had him sign some artwork for my son when he was seven was a very generous with praise for other artists during turtles artwork and that that's that's how you know a, a really good leader is when yeah. When when blame comes in, he eats it up, so no one else touches it. But when praise comes in, he spreads it around to everyone else around him. And well, it's, it seems like Kevin Eastman's kind of that kind of guy. Uh, well, I I, yeah. I you know Kevin knows I was I I just been super impressed with him personally, um, and uh, which is cool because you know I'm always worried that like oh I'm gonna meet my childhood hero and they're a dick you know but um, no he's he's a great guy um, yeah, and uh, when, when turtles went big. You know, I had a lot of people, you know, speculate whether they were nice guys or, or, or jerks. And I always said that their success that, that they've experienced couldn't happen to two nicer people. Both Kevin Eastman and Peter, Peter Laird are salt of the earth. They're, they're just wonderful people. And, and Kevin Eastman, you know, comes from like that, that same branch of the tree that I do where the fans are at the, at, you know, super important to us. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've seen him spend, you know, obvious. have a, have a line of people that, I mean, there must be a, a freaking thousand people at a convention and not only will he wait and sit and sign everybody's books, but he'll spend 10, 15 minutes with every person talking to them and getting, you know, answering their questions and stuff. And he also said, by the way, that whenever he does signings, people, some, someone always brings up one of our RPGs, yeah. at least a few people. Oh, that's awesome. Them. Yeah. so it really did it hit a lot of people and affect a lot of people yeah. um but you know to answer that question i mean our our depiction of all the characters is 
true to the original early comics. Yep. And as you'll see them basically depicted in the last run. We're going to get just, into some, yeah. some real stuff here in, in a moment. But uh, I, this this question has been nagging me ever since I saw the comment last night. And I wasn't going to ask you, but now I am going to ask you. And it's OK if you're like, no, I'm not going to touch that one. Um, the comment came up basically said that people don't like TMNT. They prefer After the Bomb. Per, apparently TMNT has a bad rap, but After the Bomb is considered the good game. I've literally never heard that an entire time. In I've my never heard I life. haven't either. Not, I mean, not, not ever. Not but, to say that. After the bomb isn't a good game. Yeah, I mean, but they're it both is. written by the same person. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, off the same core rules. So, I mean, one might be, you know, I would, I would imagine that, you know, when Eric did the revised version of After the Bomb, that was, you know, the pinnacle of what he was working on. You know, it, it would be get more refined over time. Um, but uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. And I'll tell you, when I was just working on Savage Riffs, I had people reach out to me asking me about. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Palladium one, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, it's just, the, the interest and the love for it goes very deep. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, that's part of the reason why, yeah. you know, this is the first thing we wanted to do when we, when we talked to Paramount. Right. Did well, you want to finish uh, have, those comments so I, that we can yeah, get to I, questions? I got, a, I got a couple more. Okay. And okay. This, this, this one is, is part of the system. Will the insanity system be included like it was in first edition? Uh, probably not, or if it is, it's our. It'll be our current. It'll be yeah. Current we'll current type of system, yeah, OBS and, and whatnot. And, yeah. But yeah. Okay. That's okay. actually one of the things I like about the Palladium games is when you take hit point damage, when you actually take some severe injuries, you can have some trauma that yeah. comes from that, and I think yeah. that's I think that's important to a game. I don't care if it's the original version or this version. I think they're both fine. But no, it's, uh, the, it's yeah, we're basing this off the revised version. But again, this is going to end up being a revised revised because I am going to be going. I am going through it with a fight, fine tooth comb. So. Well, I just want to say before I forget because we'll get caught up in some other bunch of questions. Sure. So for for every Palladium fan, these color hard covers are a hint and more than a hint it's a good example of what we plan to do with our entire game lines yes and we we issue books when we do new new editions it we're looking to go full color and amazing color not oh, wow. just oh, our cover yeah yeah so this just so you know i mean for kevin that's you know this is something new for me this is i, I was already working on i don't know and an, an updated adaptation of rift some you could say um but the idea was you know, for a new generation with full color art. So for me, this is just returning back to. Will there always yeah, still production. be a black and white version for cheapskate set only can <laughs> like oh, some, we'll sometimes see. to be honest with you, I don't want a big full color version of a book. I just like having the information available. Well, it, well that, that's that you, you, some people want a table copy, you know, yeah, a, yeah, a right. copy to pass around right. the table and you don't want the, the big, you know, hardcover full color deal. The Cheeto hands. And, you know, pass yeah. around these, right. these slimy Cheetos eating bastards at your table, <laughs> yeah. messing up your nice book like that. You want a table book, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. And I, I think there's some, <laughs> there's some really interesting things to play with there. Um, you know, one of the things we do have is we have our soft cover versions that come mm -hmm. out from our popular books. So we'll, we'll look, definitely look at that. Um, but I guess that's time, what I meant right there. I apologize if I wasn't clear enough about that, but that's no, kind no, of no, like, that's like cool. A, but like a good but also like, and then a you, know, you have to understand doing like, for instance, the black, white and red edition, this would be very similar, right? If we did like a soft cover, black, white and red, um, there's actually a lot of extra production that goes into the black and white version. It, it's, you know, if okay. you're going to go full color, you might as well go full color. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, sure. I can do a grayscale version of it, but, um, you know, well, we'll see. We'll see what 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 uh, fans want and what price points are out there and stuff yep. like that. Yep. But we always listen to fans, and yep. price is always a concern, as you guys absolutely. Know. And, well, and the other thing is, is I think you're going to find that um, even with these books, especially if you get involved in the Kickstarter, um, these are going to be the cheapest if you get them at the Kickstarter, guaranteed. Sure. Um, and for a number of reasons, um, business wise, but uh, that that's you know are, we are dedicated to putting stuff like this together um and being you know very reasonably priced on the market i, I, I guess I'm, maybe i'm being weird about this but i'm just a little nostalgic there where it's like it's my palladium collection other than cyberworks honestly is stuff like this and yep. it'd be weird to all of a sudden have them all be different like digest size sure and, and sure no and, and, and it'll depend on the books as you know because there's for instance there's a lot of tiles that we already have announced which we for instance if you haven't seen it um there's a uh, a web page on our on our um, website uh, that lists 
you know, our, what, what our priorities mm -hmm. for production stuff are. I guess we need to announce turtle or add turtles to that. Yeah, <laughs> if we can probably talk about it. Um, but the whole point is, is some of those will will be the traditional, yeah. you know, soft cover, black and white yeah. books because they're already in advanced stages of production, right? So that's a lot of that will continue. But we are also showing people what Palladium can and will be doing um, with with select uh, titles in the future. Ah, okay. see, that comes to my next question. Halcyon had the same question. It's awesome you got turtles back, but pie in the sky. It's an IP you haven't had before. Which one do you want to turn into a a, a, a Palladium game? Only uses the Savage World system. I don't, I don't know. Maybe but, some current IP that only uses. I, I just people, people mention Palladium. Savage Worlds, guys. I mean, that's not my company. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> I want you to understand that. I love them. They're great people, right? Yeah, yeah. I, no, I no, really no. Love that was just that was just him like Savage elaborating Worlds. on his main point. Where do you have a dream IP that you wish to bring into the Palladium RPG system? that you have not even spoken to anyone about yet. Like oh, it, so it, 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 it's so secret. You wake up and said, no, that's a dream. That's private. And you don't tell anyone, but you can tell us here now be, because you're dreaming right now. So it's fine. Do you have so, one? Do you want to talk about one? I, I mean, for me, except, you know, there's too many hands in it these days, you know, for, for a long, long time as a comic book guy, you know, my, my dream IP was, uh, you know, Marvel, the Marvel universe. Mm. Um, but you know, we, we had a, that there was one point in the 1990s where we were in contention to get that license, and it just the more we talked to the people in charge at Marvel at that time, right? These things can change very quickly. It was oh, going to yeah, be yeah. a nightmare. They didn't really understand what the fan base wanted, uh, and again, that's this is 20 years ago, right. 25 years ago, um, and, and 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 we walked away from it because it just it was going to be too much of a nightmare. Um, so yeah, that would be a dream if I could do it the right way, the way I feel it needs to be done or should be done. I would love, love to do Marvel. It's never going to happen, but that that would be a dream. Hey, you know what? That's what dreams are for, right? Was the was the was the when you guys went for Star Wars? Was that more for Wujik? I uh, know that. I mean, I was a super Star Wars okay. nut back then. So I yeah, mean, guess we're gonna have another live stream in the future. To talk about that. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, they went. Yeah, but I mean, it didn't happen. When West obviously. End, when West End West got End the game in the nineteen eighties. Um, we were the last guys to bow out in, in what was basically a bidding war. Mm. So, yeah, I went after it hard <laughs> in the 19, late 80s or um, mid 80s, I guess. Yeah, a couple of like popular ones that I, I know that I enjoy that I would love to work on, like Star Trek. I'd love to work on um, uh, Fallout. Um, Fallout's one that I told Kevin. I was like, by the way, if this ever comes up. Um, well, Modifius got Fallout. Gundam, yeah, but, but yeah, that's what I was gonna get get to. Oh, but, Gundam, I mean, both those are being done really well. That would be right? good. Oh, crap! Well received, I, 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 I really want to do Gundam. Yeah. Um, oh we'll my see. God, my 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 brain just seized up. That would be freaking amazing. I mean, with it, you you have you have the Robotech cred to to actually say you can do it, and I believe that you could do it really well. That would be amazing. Thank Who you. owns Gundam right now? Is that part of Mechton? Uh, or Tel oh Sony? no 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 no, that's Bandai. Hmm. No, is it bandit okay and, oh, and they are <laughs> they are uh from what i understand they are super japanese they're not just regular japanese they're super wow. japanese well and, and gundam's uh, like if, they're they're yeah it's 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 their baby and if, yeah. if you want to get involved with that you're gonna you're gonna be vetted and you're gonna have rules and and I mean, if anyone knows anyone at you know <laughs> at Namco Bandai that wants to reach out that, to that'd us, be that'd great, be great but, but man because this, this I, I, be I, hey, let me play in that sandbox I'll you tell me which corner of the sandbox to go to and we'll have fun. <laughs> um, you know, because I, I it's just a great, a great power. I love the Fed Zeon Civil War. Um, but uh anyways, yeah, that's that's the one. And then I also I, I don't know if this would really be viable. Um, and I'd really rather just do a lot of there's a lot of things that I enjoy about certain properties that I'm like, we could just do it with phase world, right? <laughs> like I really love uh space battleship Yamato, right? Mm. Um, oh yeah. I, I was a big Robotech fan. I'm still a big Robotech yep. fan, but you know, I'm a big Battletech fan. So I mean, you know, but there's there's a lot of ways you can you can you can get your rocks off with a lot of the stuff we already have. So yeah. cool. Yep. And there, there's a couple things in here, Max, in the in the in the start area, especially uh, one one from Weird Guy. I don't know if I should put that on the screen. I don't know. I mean, I know it's, it's who he is from the bucks, cartoon, but, but I don't know if I should put a screen. But while oh. you're looking at that, I'm going to get oh, one five, here. That, yeah, it's a super this, chat. This is about TMNT, but it's in Palladium in general. 
Uh, this is from uh, uh, G. Fram Denkar. I don't, I got nothing. But uh, given the revision of Vampire Kingdoms and its success, can we expect other older titles such as England, Africa receiving the same refresh treatment? I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what's happening with, with fantasy right now, right? So we, you know, yeah. Kevin finished uh, Yin Sloth uh, Jungles. Um, revised and expanded, and um, it's leading to an extra book, um, Yin Sloth Expeditions. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's we 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 think we 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 agree that's been a great approach that Kevin's done. Just like the revised source book one was great, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, yeah, we we do continue to look forward to doing things like that. But I don't know we're really focused on a lot of new stuff too. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's there's a lot of things we would love to do and, and, and we certainly, you know, have our ears to the ground. So we know what fans want. It's really a matter of time, time and resources. Um, you know, for example, why did we go after TMNT? I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of obvious reasons, but you know, one of the big ones for us was we knew how much it was loved. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to, you know, keep Eric's name in, in the public eye because, you know, he's a great guy. It was a great guy and, you know, one of my closest friends. And we knew fans loved it. So when we could bring it back. Um, and it was the we, timing we is fortuitous because yeah. Kevin had just talked to some people at Viacom, but then Viacom was bought by Paramount. We didn't realize. Other way around. Oh, Paramount bought Viacom? Viacom bought Paramount and Nickelodeon. Oh, then, but they then they kept the, the, the Paramount name. Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah, okay, I did. Yeah, one it was weird because now it's all Paramount, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So it's some incestuous corporate relationship, but um, <laughs> but the cool thing was there was different people there that were open to totally different new ideas. Right? Oh yeah, we've been kicking this idea around since well forever, but uh, Nickelodeon had actually reached out to me in 2015. And we just we, we we couldn't devote our time and give it you know what it really deserved. Yeah, and like I, everything that was going on in 2015, and then you know we reconsidered it again in like 2019, um, and then uh, you know the time was right and the people were right and we're doing it now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, and I I I. I you know, Kevin was very patient with me because I just was like, "Can we reach out again? When can we reach out again?" It's like this is when we reach out. He knows the he knows the life the cycle of these people over a year. He knows when to reach out. He knows how to do the negotiations. That's been one of the coolest things is learning from this guy. It's like um, there's a lot of stuff I already knew before I came to Palladium. There's a lot of things that Palladium's doing that's really cool that other companies aren't as from a business standpoint mm -hmm. um, side of things. Um, but at the same time, we've been updating other systems, right? There's been a lot of a lot of learning, but uh, one of the things that I really got to learn a lot about was was negotiate high powered negotiations from Kevin on the ground level. So that's been really exciting. <laughs> I feel oh, like I finally kind of exciting. You mean levels. what? <laughs> What's that? Uh, am I exciting? You mean this sucks? Alcohol, hookers, and blow. That's that, <laughs> yeah. that, that, or that only in the movies. The, the high that. powered corporate tripod of negotiations sean is just there in black and white nothing but a smoke fog there and there that is what we're gonna do see we're gonna <laughs> and we got well, your family in a hidden location yeah <laughs> now, now I, I i read this in chat it's it's a it's a 20 dollars super chat thank you very much i drink therefore i am and when i read it before i throw it up there when i read it i i saw this ip idea and i never thought of before and i hate myself for never before thinking you read it before you read it before. I want to put this out there for folks. Guys, we got to get down to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff, so I'm not going to talk about any more Rift stuff until we get to later on in the stream because we really want to talk about TMNT. Yeah, let's get through more of the TMNT because we need to talk about some of the other stuff we're offering with the Kickstarter as well. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this, is, this is the last one from chat because I think it's just so great. Vampire Hunter D as a, as a game. Now... You with, know, Kevin's uh, not with, familiar with, he's familiar with a lot of anime. He's not familiar with Vampire. Oh, not familiar. Okay. This, 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 so this is, we, thought, uh, we actually this had is, to talk about it. But, like, it's, it's an, it's an apocalyptic future where there's, there's a, there's a, a medieval type technology along with high technology, but magic is already, magic is there. There are vampires and the main character is a half vampire. And okay. with it, uh, just, just off the top of my head, mixing Heroes Unlimited, Ninjas and Super Spies and Palladium Fantasy together would be this world already well i think you could actually do a pretty good vampire hunter d game if you just took 
you know, um, beyond or not not beyond the supernatural. Um, well, you could actually have elements of that as well. But you you could take Nightbane and Rifts, jam it together, and you could have a pretty cool Vampire Hunter D game. But you could have, um, you could have a, a thing. But I'm I'm talking about like a, a a brand new make make the IP for for Palladium, you know from yeah. scratch ground up that that would be that would be awesome it'd be a lot of work i wouldn't want to do it but it would be awesome <laughs> no, it'd be fun it'd be fun it would be it's a cool it's a cool ip that's not a bad idea you know when we're talking about different ips you could do yeah but you know the main thing i'd say is kevin and i are mo mostly focused on you know well i mean besides me being a giant fanboy well um, yeah yeah we're, we're not and, asking you to, to like say this. yay it's or like, nay on no, but, this, but, no 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 but just so you know our core approach yeah. is to work on our ips yeah. and yeah. you know finish the beyond the supernatural books you know yeah. Um, you know, keep keep progressing with our IPs sure. and use any of the you know the the different funds and the and and the connections we're gaining to help us produce our stuff. Yeah, to be different. fair, is there really a genre IP that you're missing? No, I don't think so. If you yeah. if you oh, found no. <laughs> no, there is there is uh shit, what was it a uh, slice of life like like a uh, system like, uh, uh, system failure? Oh crap! Never mind. All right. <laughs> so, so I mean, like, yeah, I mean, because if you consider, I mean, you, you depend on how you splice things up, but you know, um, yeah, I consider we consider Phase World, you know, our space opera. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah. We've got yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, it, it, it has a Star Wars, Wars feel. We actually have crazy. I mean, I when I joined Kevin here, I had three different IPs I wanted to launch uh, for my own company, and Kevin's like, well, you could do them with Palladium. So. <laughs> And they're great. I think they're great ideas. Kevin thinks they're cool. So maybe we'll eventually do those too. But we got, you know. Well, so I definitely have some generic Palladium questions as we as we go along here. But we do want to bring this back to T, uh, TMNT because that yeah. that is the focus of that. For me, that's the excitement of what we're here to talk about. But I do. I, what I love about this is this is probably the quietest I've been on a live stream in months ever uh, because I love the fact that you guys have this energy and can just keep going. So, oh, so talking. So Talking about this, so let, let's just go back to the beginning. How did this all come to fruition? Like, because I mean, you you've already said like, oh, you know, you're never going to get that the TMNT IP, and you know, other folks are like, whoa, how did they get this? So, you know, the parts you can tell anyway. How did you? How this fall into your lap again? Well, so, it didn't fall into our lap. Yeah. We'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of hard work. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and uh, you know, this is this was I would say this is mind over matter. Yeah, I was going to say never, never tell me never, or, or that's impossible. Because I, I, I take that and go, okay, let's do that. In fact, I have to say, I'm enjoying this so much because for a lot of people, we are doing the impossible. And uh, I, I, I love doing the impossible. Yeah. Um, or what people perceive to be impossible. Well, it would have been impossible for just Kevin or just me, I think. This has taken our combined. Yeah, it's, it's, it, 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 Sean's right. I mean, it's having the right people. Like I said, we've actually been kicking this around for, you know, almost 10 years, I, where I actually spoke to people at Nickelodeon in 2015 and, and found out what they would expect from us, what they want, you know, what the guarantee would be, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, we said, you know, we're that, and we kept the, the door open. You know, but I said, you know, we, we can't do this right now. Um, let us get back to you. And then, in fact, when when we felt, you know, if Sean on board here at Palladium, I felt like this is the time we can do this. Um, and we were fresh off of Titan Robotics, and we had remastered the Cyborgs collection. We were, we, we had, uh, you know, we're about to nail a Kickstarter, right, delivery and, and all this stuff. We're setting up a lot of things that... Yeah, and, you know, we, we've mentioned before that we have a five-year plan to... Yes. to put palladium back on top and this this was one of the the like points in the plan yeah and, and so in fact when i i reached out to it doesn't have to be turtles but yeah when, when i reached out to to paramount I, I i i thought we were screwed because my contact from nickelodeon who was an awesome lady named linda lee um she's no longer with them since viacom bought nickelodeon paramount um, you know, a lot of people around. got moved around and, and, and some are gone and, and Linda was gone and I'm like, oh shit. And, like but you know, we reached out to, to, we thought we had an in and we lost it. Right? Yep. Yeah. And, and so we reached out, <laughs> to, no idea what we, were. we reached out blindly <laughs> to Paramount, um, actually last, last fall. 
and it took a couple months before we could find the right people and we finally uh got a name and reached out to her and um they contacted us we had a zoom call and we did our pitch and again like i said fortunately um paramount in particular and especially i think the more creative people like like the gentleman who's uh our approval guy jeff whitman but i think a, a lot of paramount so one of the nice surprises of paramount is that they're they are really aware of their fan base yes okay uh, and they and they for a big giant corporation they seem to really care about their fan base so they were very much aware that our game existed that people loved it and linda had told me that back in 2015 like i was i was blown away that you know they call me out of the blue and, and i'm like i i'm surprised you're calling me and they go well we have a lot of you know teenage mutant ninja turtle and other strangeness fans we, we love that book and we would love to see it come back out and i'm like holy crap that's amazing so and i think that's how we got it over a lot of other companies it's just the relationship i had with eastman and laird all those years that was so positive and the fact that so many people love the damn game that eric and i came up with but you know mostly eric i mean he's the to, guy to be fair there there is no like animosity the the license wasn't uh wasn't lost or let go or whatever yeah hand. because of any anything night. negative it was just no not at all yeah. no, no 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 we we thought we had in fact i you know looking back i wish i had never let it go but it was one of those things where we felt like it had played out as far as we could take it um back in the 90s it got kind of kidified mm. so a lot of people stopped buying and playing it because it was like playing Mickey Mouse, I think, for a lot of people. The perception. That, that's what they thought. That, that, that was that was the, the general idea right. of as opposed Ninja to this Turtle. Gritty graphic yeah, novel, because right. of the cartoon, it, it 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 moved everyone's perception away from the comics and the role playing well, game. Well, the cartoon, and a completely different animal. The cartoon and the toy line. I mean, let's face it, the toy line, yeah. which was hugely successful, yeah. was one of the biggest success stories yeah. in nine and in under turtle right. history in uh, <laughs> toy history you know it was aimed for the four to eight year old so that for a while damaged things but you know fast forward 20 years you know the comics came out the movies got grittier um they've done their people who loved cartoon. it as a kid grew up yeah and well, as those kids thing, grew right? up yes but yeah do you, i mean you know i you can't really fault kevin because it's like that's a gamble to hold on to an ip and keep paying into it when it's not producing money right, right? um well and we and had focus. it for, we yeah. had it for like 10 or 12 or 15 years right. um so you know that's a long time most people when they get a license they have it for you know three years four years and, and we had it for over a decade so you know and, and so it, it's we were happy that we were able to put it together i mean there was some willing and dealing there were some you know sacrifices um but uh, we were able to put the deal together and you know the paramount people were actually you know for the most part really great to work with and still were they still are they still I mean, are still working yeah, we're still with them, working right, with them, right? <laughs> and then and the part of it is they didn't understand our niche in the industry they just weren't familiar with it and so there were a lot of well there's a lot of time that was that came from you know uh lawyers not understanding it and then the language in the contract doesn't reflect our business model at all and we're right. like hey this is and and it's you know it, it's also like, are they trying to jerk us around or is this like, you know what I mean? You, you naturally, when you see it, you're like, what? And so in the end, we just came to realize, hey, they just don't understand this whole enchilada. We got to go and explain it to them. I mean, I don't know how else to put it because it was like they did not get this, our distribution model. Yeah, yeah. And we had to explain all of that to them. They, they were excited about Kickstarter because another Paramount property did really well on Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, okay. And but they didn't understand Kickstarter. Yeah. They just were like, oh, Kickstarter is like Amazon. You make lots of money, like, <laughs> or something. Well, actually, I think it was, it was more like Kickstarter is magic. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Money comes out of Kickstarter. And yeah, it's, it's, it's the black box. You know, you, you, you <laughs> type in type in words and out comes money. That's yeah, they, they didn't understand that, you know, yeah, the, the, the Kickstarter takes a cut of the fan paying us, mm -hmm. right, right. Uh, in a transaction. And once they understood that, they they very quickly – started you know fixing a lot of this the contractual details that were that were really uh holding things up and so they've been really great to work with it's yeah. just there's a lot of these things that was just came to understanding or understanding what the fans need or once they under for instance they didn't understand distributors because they're used to distribution as in barnes and noble and walmart 
yeah, and you target, know, yeah, right, target right. books and t-shirts and stuff like that. They didn't understand our comic book esque yeah. distribution model where we're yeah. selling to you know direct sale distributors, direct sale distributors and retailers and online on our own website right. they're like you've they, got your own were, website store yeah they were like so you know, confused like, yes. yeah yes and so when once they understood that they were like oh we don't want to because at first they were like we don't want to sell through distributors big for a lot of reasons like for instance bookstores can return huge right. quantities of material right and mm -hmm. so they didn't understand that we were already selling on a non-returnable basis unless yeah. the product was damaged so there was these there was just a lot of these it sounds really simple but it's actually pretty complicated well, it you sounds know, like it's, it's a, a learning experience on both sides record. though it they, was they, they yeah. had to learn how do you guys because you know this part of the business how you guys run this part of the business and you had to learn the the contractual side and the the would you guys call it that the the hollywood side of this yeah i guess is the best way you can put it right and so you know it's just that there was a lot of things where we we're all learning each other's language each other's business models so we could communicate clearly about certain expectations and i, and I give them a lot of credit because you're talking about and this goes back to so we're very niche paramount being aware of its fan base and trying to please its fan base we're talking a multi-billion dollar conglomerate yes. you know very few big companies that give two shits about you know the little fan base or or a little company like us they're used to dealing with these mega companies you know mega companies working with mega companies and for them to take the time that they did to to understand our business and to placate our needs and and when we'd say well the fans don't want that we they were going to want this we explain it to them and, and you know they were willing to go oh yeah we we get that Let, let's let's cool. do that you know a great example is is most of the kickstarter exclusives all of the kickstarter exclusives dice basically <laughs> miniatures um you know dice towers etc cetera, etc cetera. you know this is all new to them and they're, they're like, like i don't know and then we oh, explain it and we explain what the fans want and they're like okay let yeah us, let us work this out fuck it took sorry <laughs> you know, it's, okay, it's okay it 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 took like eight months for one of our uh uh paramount liaisons to get the toy division to let us do minis. minis and then part of that was you can do minis but they were like they have to be of characters you know or as depicted in the rpg and they wanted to make sure it's exclusive. This again, it's about building relationships. So we're like, hey, you let our foot in the door. We are super yeah. happy to acquiesce, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> right. But I mean, you yeah. know, and they were like, dice. Why do people want dice? And we're like, well, that's how they play the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> are yeah. gamers are obsessed. They're like, with what's? We're like, and we want to do a game master. And they're like, what's a game master? You know, like. So it was, you know, there's a lot of little things like that. We're like, okay, this is a game reference screen and. You know, it, it, so there was a lot of stepping through things like that, but it's been great because they have really opened up a lot of doors for things that we we can do. Well, that, again, they that, didn't have to do any of that shit. No, no, just said, didn't. you know, exactly. the hell with you. This is yeah. like a little piddly. You, right. I don't care how big this Kickstarter may be, whatever it is, it's pennies compared to what they deal with in yeah. the film and television and yes. right. and just totally so that says a lot the about amount of them. money that's at stake. Their legal division, I'll give them credit. He made a lot of concessions to give us a very specific contract that it could allow us a lot of things that could have never happened otherwise because this is the publishing division, right? They can authorize books and printed materials. They had to go ask everyone else for stuff like dice, dice towers, you know, miniatures, it, miniatures right? I mean, so so this is like a big coup in a lot of ways. And we hope, you know, our hope again is that, is that the fans – a understand and appreciate that and um, take advantage of and it. take advantage of it because it's just going to be the kickstarter guys yeah. and okay. that's yeah. that's right. the Hang best on. we could yeah. do right you know but what i mean so, you're absolutely right so uh uh go, going back to to the kickstarter that opens up uh usually with with a kickstarter the more money they get stretch goals get get unlocked and you get yep. you get more stuff like right. you know especially dice dice towers you know specialty screen stuff like that what 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 do we have for this TMNT release as uh, for like stretch goals and added stuff as so more, as more money progresses. That's your call. That's my call. Yeah. Well, so one of the things that I'm really big on, and I did this with Titan Robotics, and I this, this is gonna be my fourth rodeo, so um with Kickstarter, but um is involved with a couple of you know the big ones on the Savage Rift side. Um and one and I well, and I've been involved in more than that actually, but I didn't like run the most recent one for South America and Terror on the Dark Frontier. Um, but I helped plan it 
Um, and one of the big things you don't want to do is get in yourself into some sort of weird production debt um, where you have to go out all the bells and whistles and, you know, an extra source book because it was just a stretch goal. And a lot of people, I think you can miss the boat on what's important and what's cool that's wor still worthwhile as a stretch goal. And and so that's why I called them milestones when we did Titan Robotics. Yeah. Um, and so we, again, we, we want to, again, so Titan Robotics, you know, um, I know that uh, we had a couple of weeks delay on printing that passed our like buffer that we'd already planned in and that, you know, um, but still, I mean, I have friends that they, you know, they don't, they, they, well, my buddies, he backs all kinds of game stuff. And when he got Titan Robot, he backed it just because he's my buddy, right? He just got the book. He doesn't even play our games, right? But he was like, wow, I got this book crazy fast. I wasn't expecting it till next year, you know? Um, so again, we want to turn this around as quickly as humanly possible within a reasonable time frame. And we have our, we are, we have our ducks in a row and are getting even more ducks in a row yeah. as suddenly stuff like miniatures gets greenlit. And we're like, whoa. And so that's part of this whole scramble is, is when they allow things that we've been, been, you know, kind of begging for or asking yeah. for and negotiating for, right. That we're like, suddenly like, okay, well now we need to do it top notch quality. And it, it, and it has to be, we have to nail it. Right. So um, that's one of the crazy things about all this, but um, just again, I don't want to, so with the stretch goals, though, I think that there's going to be things like um, uh, sort of like Titan Robotics. We had an introductory adventure that was mm -hmm. digital only. Um, we have something like that planned um, with a writer from the comics. Um, we also, one of the big ones that we negotiated for um, is Fugitoid. So I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with Fugitoid, but it's an early Eastman and Laird, uh, Peter Laird especially character, um, who you can see image. There's, there's pictures of him. He's depicted in... TMNT Guide to the Universe. He was very important in also early in here, <laughs> and he is in there. He is in Last Ronin. Yes. Um, so, but the weird thing was, they talked about him, and there's comics with him in it and stuff. But I, there's you no know stats. there's they have a full write up and stats and all that kind of stuff. So that's one of the things that they're going to allow us to do is oh, add right. that to the book. And Fugitoid as a stretch goal will, will unlock the miniature in the miniature set for the, okay. the uh the heroes set there's a heroes okay. and a villain Wait, are set. we gonna get terror bear miniatures yes. oh my god oh, oh okay i mean I, <laughs> come on man, man. Oh, oh, Kevin, be excited. Kevin, you can't tell people stuff you keep yeah. your mouth shut. <laughs> it's not a new release it's not a new release terror bears come on Kevin. terror bears why not <laughs> no there's Good no stuff. terror bears sorry go away oh no yeah terror bears will be in the villain set Absolutely. yeah <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> I, I, I do it a lot. I'm like, Kevin, shut your mouth. It seems to be a common theme because this happened last time too. So I'm just saying, you know. Um, yeah. Well, hang on. I, I, got, I got one more thing. I actually thought of this while, while you gave me this idea while you were talking. You you're, you're were talking with Paramount. They were learning about your business. You were learning about their business so, right. so you could do business, right? Right. Absolutely. But. Did, did anyone over at Paramount even throw out, like, go fishing for the idea of a Palladium IB IP being turned into a movie? Did no, anyone right, ever not. bring that up? We're talking with the publishing division. Just I know, I know, I know. But I'm just saying, did it come up at all from any part of Paramount? No, I mean, not yet. Not yet? Okay, we're, because... We're, we're actually still meeting successful. a lot of people. We're <laughs> yeah, still meeting yeah. a lot of people, right? Because... Um, you know, the, one of the things that's great um, about Jeff is he's introducing us to a lot of people involved in the comics, right. but he's also reaching out to people involved in different animated series, reboots, and movies so that they can get in contact. We found out the guy who did Ciro. Um, oh, yeah. C um, I forget his last name. Ciro uh, Neely. He, yeah, Nielly. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's apparently he's a huge, huge player fan. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he wanted he wanted terror bears in that in, that in the 2012 uh, series, and his, his and they're like, sorry, Palladium owns that, and, <laughs> and, and so he he his homage to that was Dream Beavers. He did the Dream Beavers. <laughs> okay. But you know, All this right. is the same type of thing we found out from Sophie Campbell. You know that um, she had done, you know, uh, as an homage to. Uh, mm -hmm. Where is it? The that that really the big weasels. mutant porcupine. On oh, the mutant porcupine. There's yeah. this giant mutant porcupine in one of the comics, right? Or the weasels. Or yeah, she's got one. three weasel characters, and in her mind, it's an homage to Caesar and the weasels, 
Um, she also, like in the background, one of the running themes in, in the TMNT comic by IDW is, is the, there's a, a musical group yeah. called After the Bomb. And so oh. you'll see like like posters and stuff that in says like after Michelangelo's bomb. room that says after the bomb. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. But so. I, what 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 I was what I was thinking of what what really hit me was a movie I would I would I would give my left testicle to have made and and the movie that would probably get made in its place. The one I would want is is a a a, a movie based on the the coalition states and and the emperor and, and 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 all the people around and and destroying the the supernatural menace on the earth that that is coming through all the portals but that'll never get made because apparently i'm the only sane person around here no what what'll probably what'll probably you know end up getting made if anything does is aaron tarn and her and her cyber knight going around you know throwing off uh the the chains of oppression to, to, to the people that, that she travels the rifts earth to find that, that, that that's a better movie than half the movies in my head, but better movie than half the movies I've seen in the last 10 years. So I, I was wondering if, if, if that was a pie in the sky type thing, but apparently not. Well, yeah, always. Are you kidding? Been. Yeah. We would love to see a riffs movie. And in fact, uh, a trilogy of the coalition versus uh, what is it? The Federation of magic. Is that who they, on yeah well I, I i don't know if that would work in a movie you know like like action, bad guy man. versus all just as bad guy but different i think it would be uh, we're talking like, about turtles or riffs uh, we're, we're talking <laughs> about both i mean a, a turtle uh a, a, a turtle, See, movie yeah, do a turtle man, man, riff has been done several times and i didn't like any of them so they're 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 probably it's probably gonna have to be an animated an animated type type thing if it's if it's gonna get back to gritty right it's you're still gonna have to go animated but it, it, it's going to be hard to to reconcile in people's minds the difference between the the 1980s and 90s car, cartoon uh, 90s cartoon turtles and then and the turtles that we're basing this off of which are the base ip type turtles it's going to be a lot of reconciliation people aren't going to go for that but if they're going to go for any ip it'll probably be riffs <laughs> that's what i'm saying well All right, no more you... riffs talk damn it <laughs> sorry okay but, oh the another thing i want to talk about um with the kickstarter that people are probably curious about is the dice we actually are working. Yeah. Um, we don't want to talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fan roll um, to be producing uh, dice sets. Um, okay. Right now, we have planned one set of dice for each of the turtles um, in oh, the okay. color their mask with a a, um, a bag and a box, um, and then uh, and a set of aluminum dice for Shredder. And oh. uh, like actually metal dice that are going to break my table. Yeah, actual metal. No, no the, the aluminum ones are aluminum plated, so they're not as heavy as the oh, okay, okay, solid okay. metal dice. They're okay, a lot, cool. and they're a lot more economical. I mean, yeah. you can afford them. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that and then um, there's uh, there's some cool stuff with like a dice tray and a connectable dice tower, and uh, maybe even a, a, a scroll mat if they can pull off my crazy idea um and then i said i just sent them like a crazy idea and i don't even know if they can if it fits into their production profile but um and then we are also looking at doing a set of mutagen green liquid filled dice um so then that would probably be if we can that would that be ourselves. a higher price uh, the higher price item dice yeah i don't know uh the, the mechanics of that they basically they swirl when you roll the dice yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but you know again mutagen theme I I, I really enjoy it so yeah, I think uh, that I, I would like that even if I didn't roll them at the table as official dice or whatever I still right. like them conceptually to be like look what we've got and they're just, and, and they're they the phosphorus ones will actually glow in the dark too uh, I don't know if we're gonna do any neon but you know we'll see um, well no you just you just put a little little chemical in there that absorbs well, light phosphorus for a second. <laughs> yeah yeah well no not actual but no but I mean they're, you know, they're, I have glow in the dark dice yeah yeah I know yeah no there's there's glow in the dark dice no we yeah, we yeah. plan on doing glow in the dark specifically um but uh, no we're, we're we're still talking with because a lot of this again got greenlit and suddenly we're like oh <laughs> so we're we're uh, I mean we're still a few weeks out from the launch of the Kickstarter mm -hmm. so. We're getting a lot of quotes getting coming back and we're, we're, yeah. we're discussing specifics. So, you know, there's a few of these things. So a lot of the stuff you fans need to understand, this is subject to change. This is all the, the stuff we want to do. Sure. If something sure. doesn't happen, it's not because we didn't think it was a good idea. It's because something fell through on, yeah. on, you know, cause we don't, we don't, again, we want only the highest quality and we want to nail the Kickstarter delivery and fulfillment. So mm -hmm. that's a big part of all this too.